So we are uh, recording the session. We will put it on the library's YouTube page. Uh, so if you want to view it later, share it with someone, we'll have the link available to you. Uh, if you're uncomfortable with being recorded, feel free to turn your camera off. Um, next, I will ask that everybody be muted. Uh, Zoom is very sensitive to sound, and we don't want the view to be pulled away from our speaker. If you have any questions during the program, you can type them in the chat box, and we'll get to them at the end of the session. Uh, once you reach the end, you can also unmute yourself if you'd prefer to ask a question that way. So here with us today is Eric Migdal. He is an eight-year resident of Pompton Lakes, New Jersey. He's happily married with a daughter, a son, and a bonus son. He is a member in good standing of the National Ge Genealogical Society and has done a lot of training with them. He became interested in genealogy 25 years ago after deciding to find out about his biological family. Being an adoptee and having almost no information, he did his ancestry DNA about three years ago and used the information about matches to build family trees that ultimately led to the discovery of who his biological mother was. He wanted to share this knowledge that he acquired to assist others with their research and started It's All Relative Genealogy LLC almost two years ago. Please welcome Derek. Thank you. Hi guys, nice to see everybody. I'm glad I have a very large group. I sometimes get one or two and sometimes a hundred, but a large group, I, I love interacting with the library patrons and sharing my information and letting everybody know. Uh, a little bit about my story and helping you learn more about your family history by um, going over things that uh, involve genealogy. So this, this program is on uh, DNA testing companies, uh, features, um, costs, and, and uh, pros and cons that you might uh, find when you uh, sign up for any of the testing companies. Um, there are a few of them. I go over five different of the testing companies. Uh, the two most popular, obviously, are Ancestry and 23andMe, but there are a few others that people might not know about. So yeah, write down your notes, take your notes. Um, I will give a handout to the library when the presentation is over. Once I know it goes smoothly, and I'll send it in a PDF format as a slideshow a PDF format of the slide so that you guys have the information that I'm going to provide to you. If, you. if you're interested, just get in touch with the library after the the presentation. I usually send it to her like the, right afterwards. So um, it's pretty good. So I've been doing a lot of these presentations and virtual has been a really good uh, godsend for me now because it's easier to get the information out to everybody without having to travel all over the country. Um, but like she said, I'm an eight year resident of Pompton Lakes, New Jersey, and I am happily married very happily. And I have a brand new Yorkshire Terrier puppy as well that keeps us very busy. But now that we're all home, it was easy to train them. Um, without having to come back home to a big mess. But uh, uh, so I got interested in the study of family history, genealogy about 25 years ago, looking for biological family. I was told at about age seven that I was adopted. And obviously at that time, I had no idea what that meant, except that I was told that I was loved twice. And after my daughter was born in 1997, I decided it was time to go and find what I needed to find. And I had very little to go on. I only had a um, an adoption decree page, just one page of the adoption decree stating, showing an, a hospital record and a receipt from a hotel in Miami, Florida. And it showed the biological mother's name, natural mother is Rose Becker. So I went on the assumption that Rose was uh, young and orthodox from New York, Queens of Brooklyn, and that she was secretly sent down to Miami to have me um, because that's what usually happens in most adoptee situations. Not all of them, but most of them. So I looked for a Rose Becker born between 1945 and 1954 in New York in all the boroughs at Westchester, and I found nothing. And this was way before we had this online um, database where I can go in and just start typing in names and looking for information. And I had signed up for a uh, group called uh, Florida Adoption Reunion Registry. And I signed up for many, many registries throughout the United States looking for biological information. And uh, I finally got back in touch with them after years and years. And they were able to tell me very little information. They told me my, mo my biological mother was 38. 
at the time of my of my birth and that she was from a Midwestern state, starting with the letter I. That's all they were able to tell me. So then I grabbed that information. I start looking for a Rose Becker born around 1927 in Illinois, Iowa, Indiana, and Iowa. And again, nothing. Uh, lots of phone calls, lots of, sorry, honey, that isn't me. No, I didn't have a child. No, I wasn't in Miami in 1966. Uh, so lots of different uh, disappointments. And then I did my ancestry DNA test and I did a 23andMe test. And with ancestry, I was matched to a man named Norman Fuhrer. And uh, he turned out to be a, a cousin match of some sort, which I didn't know how to decipher what the cousin matches meant or what the ancestry classifications of them meant um, until I started learning more. But his wife was a very big genealogist and she had a lot of information on the family. And she told me to reach out to a woman named uh, Judy in Miami and I got her address and I sent her a letter. And three days later, I got a phone call from a woman named Susan who told me that Judy is her maternal half sister that they share the same mom, but not the same dad. And I asked, told her my story as I'm telling you, and she agreed to do an ancestry DNA test. And uh, eight weeks later, I had not one, but two half siblings and the true name of my biological mother, Bella Fuhrer. So Rose Becker was an alias and all the assumptions I had were wrong. And uh, the best thing to do when you're an adoptee is do DNA. So that's why I'm going over the DNA testing companies today. But over the next year, I built a family tree, placing as many members DNA matches in my family tree as I possibly could uh, to build the family out. And I found altogether seven half siblings. One had passed already, uh, 14 nieces and nephews and dozens and dozens of cousins. Uh, quite a few of them I keep in touch with uh, once in a while, but I have a paternal half sister that we became very close and we got to meet and we talk almost every day now. Um, some of the cousins I talk to regularly on Facebook and one of the half brothers on my dad's side also, I talk to once in a while. But sometimes people, when you're adoptee, they don't wanna know who you are and they, uh, they don't wanna believe uh, whatever. But uh, I live my life as I live my life one day at a time. And I keep myself uh, busy with doing presentations and genealogy. So I don't have a lot of time to push people to do more DNA testing for my story. But I like to help other people. And I do have a client that joined in today. And we just had a super major breakthrough today with DNA. She had a very close match come up today. So we are on the verge of finding a very big answer for her. And I, I know she's in here today because she asked for the link. Uh, she's been a great client of mine, and I'm really happy to be helping her get through the uh, the, the adoption uh, scenario. Not everybody here, I'm sure, is adopted. There are probably a few of you, um, since it was a big thing, especially in the 50s and 60s. But uh, I hope you guys get the information and take notes and have your coffee or whatever you like to drink, a snack if you want. I won't be looking at you, and I won't worry about it too much. So I'm gonna stop my slides and I hope everybody enjoys. All right. Okay, I'm gonna just drop this out. I like the video panel, I don't like that, okay. All right. So this is DNA testing companies, pros, cons, costs, and features. And as you can see on the screen, uh, let me get rid of this also. Let me get rid of the floating video panel. Let me just, it's in my way, okay. Okay, so you can see I have the, uh, the five logos of the companies that I'll be going over today. And so I start off with a little terminology. Not everybody knows everything about terminology and genetic gene genealogy or genealogy itself. So I do a, bit, a little bit of terminology. DNA or deoxyribonucleic acid is a long molecule that contains our unique genetic code. Like a recipe book, it holds the instructions for making all the proteins in our bodies. Your genome is made up of a chemical called deoxyribonucleic acid, or DNA for short. The complete set of DNA makes up your genome. 
your complete encyclopedia of life. It makes your eyes blue or brown or your body tall or short. And why do we use DNA for genealogy? In today's modern world and through scientific breakthroughs, there are several companies that offer DNA testing. These tests are usually done by submitting a sample of your saliva, which contains a, your DNA or a mouth swab that collects DNA material from inside your cheek. Most popular DNA testing companies are Ancestry DNA, 23andMe, MyHeritage, Living DNA, and Family Tree and DNA. Family Tree DNA. I just want to point out that I do not work for any of these companies. I do not prefer one over the other. But if anybody has questions on your specific um, um, situation, I might be able to give you a, uh, an idea of which one might be best for you. These companies provide autosomal DNA tests and not all provide testing for Y DNA or mitochondrial DNA. We use DNA testing to find and analyze DNA matches to understand the family unit we are a part of and to find out about unknown ancestry and heritage. Autosomal YMTDNA and YDNA. Autosomal DNA tests trace a person's autosomal chromosomes. The first 22 of the 23 chromosomes are called autosomes which contain the segments of DNA the person shares with everyone to whom they are related, maternally and paternally, both directly and indirectly. Mitochondrial DNA tests trace person people's matrilineal line, the mother's line, ancestry through mitochondria, which are passed from mothers to their children. Since everyone has mitochondria, both males and females can take MT DNA tests. Because Y chromosomes are passed from father to son virtually unchanged, males can trace their patrilineal line, male line ancestry by testing their Y chromosome. Since women do not have Y chromosomes, they cannot take a Y DNA test, though their brother, father, paternal uncle, or their paternal grandfather could. I'll just hit a quick admit. Okay, so what is a centum organ? A centum organ, abbreviated small c, capital M, is just a fancy word that geneticists use to describe the length of DNA segments, specifically the difference between chromosome positions. We inherit DNA on each chromosome from each parent, and we will share segments of genetic material described as DNA segments of varying sizes with our relatives. The distance between the location on the chromosome where the shared DNA segment starts to the point where it ends is measured in centum organs. And what is a segment? A, a DNA segment is a block, chunk, piece, string of DNA on a chromosome. It is typically, typically determined by a start location and an end location on a chromosome. A segment refers to all the DNA in between and including the start and end locations. I use segments to determine if DNA matches are linked together by segments of DNA that they share. I'm gonna go over a couple of the, the costs and features that some of the, the DNA companies have. For, for instance, D Ancestry DNA. You will receive percentages of your ethnicity estimate and regions. So it'll tell you sort of where your family came from over the last three to 400 years. They will identify other relatives who have also taken Ancestry.com's DNA test, a match list. They will also build, you can also build a family tree on Ancestry. DNA collection type is a saliva collection and it's an autosomal DNA test. And it takes about six to eight weeks to receive your results after, you, after they receive it, your sample. Uh, they charge $99 for a DNA test, but they do have sales, and they actually do have a sale right now for St. Patrick's Day at $59. The subscription uh, for their monthly usage of their tools is $24.99 a month in the United States edition and $37.99 for the World edition, which gives you more documents. You can get a better monthly rate for a full year subscription. And before I go further, I want to just point out that a lot of these companies have subscriptions. Anything that I go over might have a subscription cost. Uh, 
if you're not using it or you're not using it to its full, um, uh, your full ability to get the most out of it, don't keep spending money on something that you're not really using. You can always cancel your subscription and come back when you're more ready or you have more understanding of usage so that you can use it better. So these are a few of my DNA matches that I wanted to share with you on Ancestry. The first obviously is a, uh, what they show you is ways to filter your matches. They will start with the highest uh, shared DNA, uh, meaning the closest relatives at the top, but you can sort them with lots of different ways by high to low, low to high, uh, by surname, um, whether they have trees, there are a lot of ways of filtering out um, your matches. But I start at the top and I go down generally. So when you do your DNA test, they don't automatically know how this person is related to you or how they fit in your family tree. They will give you an estimate or a possibility of how they're related to you. So for instance, if I didn't know, uh, this person comes up as a parent-child match, which means either she is my parent or she is my child. Since I know she is my child, I put it in a group and put her in as my child. We share 3,464 centimorgans across 27 segments on Ancestry. Not all the testing companies are gonna have the exact same number of centimorgans you share with somebody. They all have different algorithms and formulas they use to determine how the person is related to you, though they are very close to each other generally. It'll show you a picture. If the person decided to put a picture on this site, it'll show you a name, which I have blocked out for privacy, a name, an alias or initials or anything else they wanted to put in. It'll give you a little symbol if you are a direct ancestor or they know because of a tree that you have that she is a, a DNA, uh, a common DNA match. It'll also show you if the person has a tree and how many people are in it and whether it's locked or unlocked, private or otherwise. It'll also tell you whether you have a common mutual ancestor. You can also add it to a group on Ancestry. You can star it for later usage for looking back at it, or you could put a color coded dot to represent a certain group of family that they belong to. So for instance, on my second match, I have close family to first cousin. Now there's a range that centimorgans represent based on the relationship that you might share based on those centimorgans. And I'll go over that a little more as well, but this person shares 1,915 centimorgans with me. She has a tree of 62 people. We have a common ancestor and I did put her in a group of a little magenta dot. So I know where she is in the family. Um, they don't know exactly how she's related to me, but based on the centimorgan, she's either a grandparent or grandchild, aunt, uncle, niece, nephew, or a half sibling. Now, since I know she's female, we can get rid of the nephew, we can get rid of the uncle, um, and we can get rid of a half brother. So based on how old she is, uh, 11 years older than me, we determined based on research and knowing who her family is, that she is my, my paternal half sister. So I put her in a group as a paternal side with the little red dot. The next one down that got a little cut off is also a close family first cousin. We share 1,719 centimorgans. She has a nice tree of 413 people and she is my maternal half sister. One of the ways of understanding the possibility of how the person is related to you by centimorgans is a site called DNA Painter. And I will go over it a little more in my presentation, but I just wanted to show you that this site and the, the tool is called the Shared Centimorgan Project Tool 4.0 version four. And you can find this on a site called dnapainter.com and go to the tool section and it'll come up with this screen. You can then plug in the amount of centimorgans that you share with a match and it'll give you the most common decent ancestors and it'll show you the, the relationship probability 
of how that person is related to you. So for instance, with my half sister, like I said, she can either be a grandparent, aunt, uncle, half sibling, niece, nephew, or a grandchild. She is within a slight amount of range of being a full sibling, but we know that isn't possible. So based on everything that I learned, um, we found out that she is my half sibling. But this is a really great tool to plug in your centum organs of your shared match of your matches to find out the possibility of how they're related to you. And this is the little chart that'll show up at the bottom of that screen, and it'll highlight all the areas of uh, relationship probability uh, associated with those centum organs. And for instance, it'll show you the average amount of centum organs you will share with that person at that relationship, the high range and the low range. And as you can see, there's a large amount of leeway in the numbers for the high and the low. So that's why there are more than one probability of how the person is related to you. You will also get from Ancestry and other sites, uh, ethnicity results telling you where your family might have come from based on your DNA, um, where they've come from over the last three to 400 years. Ethnicity results are only estimates, though most of the time they're pretty close. The DNA testing companies use using data from people who have tested with them to get a benchmark of patterns of ethnicity from DNA patterns. You also receive ethnicity results based on where your ancestors and their ancestors of your DNA matches come from over the years. Migration form the basis of all ethnicity since we all come from somewhere else. My answers come from mostly Eastern Europe, France, Germany, and Belgium. Based on my DNA matches, I found that my maternal side, my mother's side came mostly from Russia, Hungary, Hungary and Latvia, though most of the areas have changed country ownership or control over the centuries. So these are my ethnicity results estimates from Ancestry. And as you can see, there's a large swath, swath of land um, in the blue area that shows Eastern Europe and Russia. Now it's only 2% of the DNA. It does break it down further into smaller groups and categories of the region. But it turns out that most of my European Jewish heritage come from more of a Western uh, more of a Western Europe, Germanic Europe, and England and Northwestern Europe than I thought. I had believed that most of my area was going to come from Russia and the Ukraine and Latvia, but a lot of my DNA came from Germany, France, Belgium, and that area. And they will give you they will give you a percentage of the amount of DNA that you're getting from certain areas and based on other people's matches. So one of the good things and one of the, okay, one of the pros of Ancestry is they will give you a timeline of when people uh, you're related to and the ethnicity results, where they come from over time. They will give you an overview of the whole area and then they will break it down based on a timeline, as you can see on my screen, they have 1825, 1850, and they will give you a little story based on the ethnicity results that you find about your possible ancestors and where they might have come from, and a story about what have, might have been happening in that region at that time, and why they might have left that region and moved on to somewhere else and migrated um, from Poland and Hungary into the Netherlands and Belgium and Germany. Family trees. Most of the DNA testing companies I will mention do not build a family tree for you from your DNA matches. Your DNA matches and how they are related to you are, are estimated based on the amount of DNA you share with them. You must build a family tree and place your matches in the correct places in order to understand the true relationship you share with your DNA matches. 23andMe does start a family tree for you based on the amount of DNA you share with the matches you will find, but they will only be truly correct if you do the research to find out how they should be placed in the tree. So for instance, this is called an extended family tree. And again, this is on Ancestry. 
and I blocked out the names of the people who are living for privacy. Um, but when you start your family tree, you might not know how to place your DNA matches in there. Over time, you need to do research to find out how they are related to you, unless you know a lot of your family, but you probably will not know second, third, fourth cousins that you will add to your family. And if you're an adoptee, you might not know who any of them are. So building a family tree based on your DNA matches will help you understand how the people are related to you. This is an extended family tree that shows aunts, uncles, cousins, siblings, half siblings, and even step family if you wanna add them in. I added a lot of people into the tree and they're not direct line, but they are aunts, uncles, cousins, and step family. Um, it even has a partner of mine that has passed on, but we have a son together. So I added them in, especially since he's my son. 23 and me. Okay, so let's go on to another. I might have to adjust my, my slides a little bit. I, I, I'm going to think I'm going to work on them a little bit differently. The 23 and me now has over 2,000 regions of ancestry reports. They give you 50 plus reports, including ancestry composition of where you come from, ancestry detail reports, the maternal and paternal haplogroups. Haplogroups are the small segments of DNA that got passed down over tens of thousands of years that scientists use to find out your migratory patterns of your family. It's helpful in some ways and not always helpful in others. Um, I don't use a lot of the haplogroups unless I need it for a specific amount of data to go back a very long way. And Neanderthal in, in, uh, ancestry. I don't use anything of the Neanderthal ancestry. It just goes back way too far to need it in this kind of uh, research. It'll give you a DNA relative finder, which is again, similar to ancestry. It'll show you your matches and it'll help you find and connect with relatives in the 23andMe database who share DNA with you for others who did the 23andMe. It'll automatically start a family tree for you uh, based on your DNA matches. But again, that won't be all correct. You need to put them in in the correct position based on research. 23andMe offers ancestry and health reports separately. You can buy an ancestry report for $99 or an ancestry and health report for $199. I like the idea of the health report. It will give you ideas of certain genes that might be uh, abnormal or anomalies in your genes that might cause you health issues later in life, but do not use DNA health reports for any medical uncertainty. If you do a 23andMe health report and get information that is concerning to you, go to a doctor and let them do a larger screening for DNA genes that might be inherited through your family that might cause you any medical issues. 23andMe does not have a subscription cost. The tools are free after you do a DNA test. And they have a lot of tools. So these are my ethnicity estimates on 23andMe. As you can see, they're very close to the ethnicity results I got on Ancestry. It shows again a map and it shows the large swath of land in uh, uh, the aqua um, color. Uh, shows where some of my family came from and shows uh, most of Europe. Now, 23andMe breaks down the um, areas that your family came from a, a little tighter than Ancestry does. Um, they sort of break down to direct countries um, and certain areas within the country like Flanders and Belgium and North Rhine, Westphalia and Germany and Greater London in the British and Irish Isles. Now, I mean, I have found some family that I believe are from the area um, and 23andMe gave me uh, ethnicity results showing that I also have uh, some of my DNA comes from more of the Northern European countries in Scandinavia, Greenland, Iceland, and Denmark. So they were a little different and a little more broad and a little more stretched out than Ancestry does. 
So this is the 23andMe uh, family tree that they built for me based on the um, DNA matches I had. Now, as you can see, it looks a little different than the one with Ancestry. I particularly like Ancestry better for myself, but everybody has their own choice on what they want to use and which one they like the best or which is best for them. Um, I just wanted to show, I don't use it a lot, but I wanted to show you how they built the tree for you and what it looks like and that you can move things around based on your knowledge and based on what you learn from research about your family and where they belong in the tree. Again, I blocked out the names of the living uh, for privacy. I didn't block out my biological father. Uh, he's up there in age, he is still alive, but he doesn't wanna know who I am. So uh, I just added his name in anyway. <laughs> uh, the rest of the people have passed, but you can see <coughs> my mom is Bella Fura and uh, my biological father is James and that my biological mother had um, several partners or marriages and she was married to everybody but James and that she um, James also had a wife and she helped his first wife and the daughter that he did not know about is my half sister and then three half brothers next to the uh, the next uh, wife he had so I just wanted to give you an understanding of what the tree looks like at 23 and me and these are my DNA matches at 23 and me. I definitely have to rework these slides a little bit, um, but you learn as you go along, right? So these are the 23 and me matches that you're gonna find if you test with 23 and me. Again, it starts with the highest amount of shared DNA and it goes to the lowest, but you can change it and go from the lowest to highest. You can also change how they come up based on mother's side or father's side if you have them separated. And you can also check, check and uh, sort them by family names and connections and where the people, uh, ancestors, birthplaces were from. You can also star them. You can search for keywords that might help you find somebody in your match list that you're looking for based on a keyword or a location. And you can star them, like I said, to highlight them so you can find them. It'll show you initials. It'll show you uh, the name if they choose to put a name in. As you can see, JN uh, just has JN as his name. So I left it there as an example. And it'll show you a picture if they put it on there. And it'll show you your estimated F, um, amount of DNA shared in percentages. Um, this is just on the main screen. If you click on the person, uh, like if I clicked on my half sister, it will show me the a percentage of DNA shared, the segments, and the centimorgans. But there are ways to decipher the percentage into centimorgans and vice versa. And I'll go over that in a little bit. But as you can see, again, they do not know exactly how these people are related to you. Um, they will give you an estimate based on the amount of DNA you share in percentage or centimorgans, and it'll slowly help you build a tree with those estimates but you need to figure it out for sure to make sure they're in the right position in your tree. But I like showing you what the match list looks like. So MyHeritage DNA is another DNA testing company that have a lot of tools to help you with your DNA research and your family history research. They have over 100 million users and it's getting bigger and 9.6 billion historical records. Ancestry also has a lot of records, but you can uncover the geographic and ethnic origins of your ancestors, similar to the other two sites. They'll let you know about where your family came from. It'll help you find long lost families. I don't really like that term because um, they're all relatives. They're not all long lost, but they do give you a match list that can help you uncover who the people in your family are. Um, it'll, you can build a family tree on Her my heritage. It's available in over 40 languages, which is very helpful. The DNA collection type is a cheek swab. You have to use like a Q-tip that they supply and you scrape the inside of your cheek and put it in a little vial and you mail it back. Uh, they have 42 regions uh, geographically that will tell you where your family came from from those regions. It is an autosomal test um, and about three to four weeks for you to get your results. 
They have a free basic family tree builder that you can use for up to 250 people. Um, if you want a bigger tree, they want you to subscribe. They are all for profit companies, so they want you to pay for it. Uh, premium is $129 uh, a year, and the first year they charge you $89. And you could build trees up to 2,500 people. And they have a premium plus for $209 a year, and the first year is $149. And it gives you unlimited access to all the historical records. <clears throat> and the ultimate package, which will give you everything that they have, is $299 a year with the first year being $199. So they start charging you more once they get you involved in it and you start using it and then they want more money. So always keep in mind what your budget is and what you're gonna be using it for and whether it's gonna serve you best. One good thing about my heritage is people who are uh, more from Europe, England and other parts of Europe is a better test for them to a certain extent because my heritage is European based. They are based in England and other parts of that area of the world. So you might get more matches that are more European based than United States based. So for people who are fairly recent to the United States, if your parents just came here or even just your grandparents, if you're here in the United States for a very long time, uh, 23 and me and Ancestry are a little better choice. So these are my DNA matches from my heritage. Now I did not test with my heritage. I just want to point out there are ways of moving your DNA from one company to another to get more matches. As an adoptee, I put my DNA anywhere I could possibly find more matches so that it'll help me understand my family better. But I will go over how you can move your DNA from one site to another and which companies accept your DNA from other sites. But I just wanted to show you what my DNA, a couple of my DNA matches are from here. Now my daughter, which is my first match, estimated relationship. They actually break it down that she's my daughter because she put information in, um, in her DNA that shows that she's in her 20s. So obviously she's not gonna be my parent if she's in her 20s and I'm in my 50s. Um, it shows you a picture, would show you a picture if they did add it in. It'll show you a name, an alias, or initials if they put it in that way. It shows you their age range. It'll only tell you 20s, 30s, 40s, 50s. It won't give you an exact date, an exact um, uh, birth year, or how old they are. Uh, but it'll show you what country they are from if they decided to choose that. And it'll also show you the amount of shared DNA in percentage and centimorgans on their match list. It'll show you how many segments you share and which, how many uh, centimorgans is the largest segment. So for instance, it is very similar to um, Ancestry and, uh, excuse me, 23 and me on the amount of centimorgans we share. It's a little bit different, but not far enough off to be a concern. You can review the DNA match and you can view a tree that they might have on my heritage. The second person down is estimated first cousin once removed to second cousin. She is a first cousin once removed. And it'll again, show you the shared DNA in percentage and centimorgans. It'll also show you uh, a name, a picture if they have it, their age range and from the country they're from and whether they have a tree. And then it'll allow you to view the tree if they have it on private. These are the ethnicity results that I received from my heritage. Now I am not a paying subscription member to my heritage. They give you very little if you have a free account. So for instance, they do break down where my family came from, but they don't pinpoint the countries. Um, I believe when you do subscribe, I'll have to subscribe and see what they really give me for like a month and then just dump it because I don't really use it as much as I use others. Um, it does break down Ashkenazi Jewish, which is a large portion of my DNA, North and Western Europe, which would be Belgium, France, Germany, uh, and the like. And it'll also show a little bit of Eastern Europe, which is gonna be Lithuania, Latvia, Belarus, Ukraine, and that kind of area. So they don't break it down as much on the free account. I do believe they break it down a little more 
um, when you have a paid account. But I just wanted to show you, they show you again a map and a large swath of land. So it's very similar to the other DNA testing uh, ethnicity estimates that I've gotten from other companies. So you can see they're all sort of similar and the percentages are all very similar. My Heritage has a tool that's very important to use if you're looking to see how people are related to each other. And this is called a chromosome browser. Uh, My Heritage and some of the other sites have really good tools. Uh, always do your homework on which tools you think you're gonna use more before you start subscribing and spending money. So a chromosome browser will allow you to triangulate. It's called triangulation. It'll let me know on which areas of my chromosomes people share the DNA or where the segments lie on the chromosomes. So in this example, I'm comparing myself, my daughter, and my other cousin that I showed on my heritage. And they will break it down and give you colors. Now, mine is gray. Uh, my daughter's is going to be a reddish color. And the, my cousin is going to be more of a yellow cousin, a yellow color. So when I put it into the chromosome browser, one to many, where I can add on my heritage up to seven people, it'll show me, uh, which I'm just showing you only the first nine of the chromosomes, just to give you an idea of how to use it. Um, it'll compare me and my daughter and my first cousin together. So it'll show the uh, areas on the chromosomes, which are these are the first nine of the 23 that we share, that we have in our bodies. And it'll show you how many show triangulated segments that are at least two centimorphies. So it'll highlight the areas of the, on the chromosomes where you share with everybody. So for instance, you can see the little areas on chromosome one where my daughter and my cousin and myself share that portion of DNA. Now, if I added another person in and they also landed within some of these areas, which might be a little smaller, but if they fall within the same areas on the chromosomes and these segments, I will know that they are from the same family and they come from the same most common recent ancestor, like a grandparent or a ant. Family tree DNA, FTDNA, uh, will give you a breakdown of ethnicities that contributed to genes. Same as all the others, they will give you ethnicity estimates. You will see how your DNA compares to ancient populations from DNA samples found in archeologic, archeological digs. Now, I just added that in to show you what other companies will use your DNA and how they will uh, match it up against different ways of using the DNA. I don't really care that they found my DNA matching to archeological, archeological digs from years and years and years ago. It's not helping me, but some people might think that's great. You get your mitochondrial, you can get your mitochondrial DNA analyzed, giving you specific about your maternal side, and they will give you uh, options for Y DNA testing, allowing you to get insights on your paternal side, a Y DNA test. The standard autosomal DNA test for ancestry, the family ancestry test is typically $79. The MT DNA test, the company will fully sequence your mitochondrial DNA for only $159. And the Y DNA tests have levels varying from 119 to $449, depending on how deep they go. The top level allowing you a nearly full sequencing of your Y chromosome, as well as a report detailing many aspects of your paternal ancestry, such as DNA matches to surnames related to you. Now, please keep in mind, when you're only paying $159 or $119 for the mitochondria, the Y DNA tests, they're not going to give you a lot of information. And you will only match with people who also did the same test at the same company. So just do your homework and look into it before you start spending money on testing of that nature. And again, I did not test with FTDNA. Um, I did move my DNA from FT from my from Ancestry in 23 to FTDNA to give me more matches. 
This is the ethnicity results for somebody else. These are not mine. Uh, mine was very boring and not very colorful, but I wanted to show you what the uh, ethnicity results would show depending on where you're from, uh, what their map looks like and what their breakdown is. So this is a DNA uh, for someone named Rebecca Lee. I do not know who she is. I just grabbed it as a screenshot for you guys, just to show you the breakdown of the ethnicity that she received in her ethnicity results. And as you can see, she is mostly from Eastern Asia, some Europe, a lot of European, the new world, which I don't uh, understand because the new world has been around for a long time. The breakdown doesn't help me at all. It's only 9%. And it seems that some of it is from the Ukraine, uh, from the United Kingdom. And then Jewish dysphoria, which is uh, migratory movements of the Jewish people, Central and South Asian, and then some trace amounts. But they do have a very colorful map. It does break down. It does break down where your family comes from and gives you decent um, ethnicity results. And again, I did move my DNA to this company so I can find more matches. And these are some of the matches that I found. Now it's matching me to myself. I do not know why it's matching me to myself. Uh, it might be a glitch in their system, or I might have uh, also put 23 in me and ancestry on this. So it's matching me to myself as a father son. Okay, so that doesn't work out. Um, the next is a half sister, grandmother, granddaughter, aunt, and niece match because it's an estimate. This is my half sister, Linda. It tells me when the match date occurred. This is when I uploaded my DNA and I used her DNA to upload it as well. Again, it'll show you a picture if they put it on there. It'll show you the name alias or initials. It'll let you know if they have a family tree. It'll give you a box so that you can message them and you can take notes and print it out. It'll also give you the estimate. It'll give you the shared centimorgans and it'll give you the largest block of uh, DNA shared with that person. You can filter them by paternal and maternal or both if the parents are related, which happens sometimes. It'll tell you that how many matches you have and on which page and you can move from page to page and you can search with name or ancestral surnames. And if you have uh, things in common with them or not in common with them. And they also have a chromosome browser like MyHeritage does. Living DNA is another DNA and a family tree. I believe you could build a family tree with them. Ancestry tests cover over 15 generations of maternal and paternal ancestry, very similar to the other companies. It'll connect you with relatives up to 13 degrees removed. If you're gonna go back far enough to find a first cousin 13 times removed, it is very, very distant. So I only use closer relationships and um, to a certain extent, some removed relationships, but I really don't go back that far because uh, it's very hard to find records once you go back very, very far. But it'll also help you discover the migration history of your ancestors, again, where they came from, um, learn the migration history. It's a cheek swab DNA test. They uh, test you and show 150 D or geographic regions. It is a uh, autosomal. They also do mtDNA and Y-DNA testing. Uh, time to results for the autosomal is six to eight weeks. Here is the, ki the, the kicker, okay? And a lot of companies do this. Um, the starter kit is only $49. However, this kit is mainly to get users interested in their DNA results and then upsell them on a more comprehensive DNA analysis later on. Always keep that in mind. Basic ancestry test is $79. This test only covers the autosomal DNA, but it also give you as well as mtDNA and Y-DNA sequences. I did not test with them. I really should and learn more about it so that I can give everybody more information. 
But if a company is telling you that they're giving you for $79, they're giving you all this stuff, it's not true. They're trying to upsell you. They're getting you in interested in their product so that they can get more money from you later on. Always keep that in mind. So again, I did upload for free my DNA to every site. So these are a few of my cousin matches. So I wanted to show you what my matches would look like on other sites. Um, they do have a dashboard, which gives you an overall view of your matches. It'll tell you your ancestry and who your relatives are. It'll give me my ethnicity, my, my ethnicity as well. Uh, I believe they do have a well-being or a health uh, aspect to their site. Um, it'll give you the, uh, again, a picture if they put it on there, initials or names or alias. It'll tell you the country in which they're from by a flag. Now, I don't know all the flags of the countries. So, I mean, I, I believe in somewhere it'll tell you the country they're from. If you click on the site, it'll tell on the person, it'll tell you the country and not just the flag, which is a little, you know, a little weird. Um, it'll show you the percentage and the centum organs of the DNA you share with the person. And it'll give you a breakdown of the, your ethnicity. Um, and as you can see, it does not have them in a order of high to low relationship. As you can see, they have them in degree matches, which are how many generations you are back. And they give you an estimate second to third and second to fourth and second to fifth. And it'll break it down that way. But you can sort them by different uh, amounts of DNA share. Um, I don't really use this site very much. They're not a very big company. It didn't provide a lot of information for me. If I delved into it a little deeper, I might be able to find some information that'll be helpful in my research. But I didn't end up finding it to be as useful as Ancestry and a couple of the others. Just as a note. Doesn't mean it's not going to work for you. And again, they will give you ethnicity results. And as you can see, since I'm not a paying member, member, I believe they only give me a certain section of my ethnicity results. Uh, very, very narrow search. 77.9% Europe, which is very narrow. I, I can't really use that. And 22.1% Near East. Now, I haven't really found anybody that came from uh, that region of the world. Um, I don't know how far they're going back to find that information, um, but um, it's very interesting to find that I might have uh, family members that originally came from Israel and the uh, Arabian Peninsula, Turkey and Greece, and uh, part of Italy, which I did not know about. So like I said, I did not test with all these sites. I only tested with Ancestry and 23andMe. Uh, they were the most popular, they give me the most results, and they are the most, um, most widely used. So they would give me the most results. But Ancestry DNA and 23andMe results data can be transferred to other sites in order to find more possible matches of your family. Ancestry and 23andMe do not allow you to upload DNA data from other sites to their sites. You can transfer your DNA to MyHeritage, FTDNA, and Living DNA for free. Another site that a lot of people put their DNA on is called GEDmatch. It is an open public database that accepts DNA data from all the companies, Ancestry, 23andMe, MyHeritage, Family Tree DNA, and Living DNA, and a couple of others that I'm not going over with today. The results of the transfer will show you a database of DNA matches across all the DNA companies. So if somebody tested on MyHeritage and you tested on Ancestry and you both put your DNA on GEDmatch, it'll match you if you share DNA with the person. It'll show you how many centum organs you share with that person. But since GEDmatch is an open and public forum, the privacy of your data is not completely secure and can be viewed by anyone wishing to check that database. You can decide the level of privacy you wish to achieve on GEDmatch. The more private you make it, the harder it is to use and the less information you're gonna get. 
but it's always up to you. GEDmatch was used to find family information that ultimately led to the arrest of the Golden State Killer who was sought after for almost 40 years. So in other words, they put his DNA on GEDmatch and they matched it to other people who shared DNA with him. They built a family tree and they had a lot of help. They had a lot of genealogists working on this to ultimately build a family tree to find out who the person was. I just wanted to show you briefly um, what the GEDmatch uh, site looks like. Um, I did block out names and email addresses for security, and they will give you a letter uh, kit number. And the letter, the, the kit number will start with a certain letter based on the uh, DNA site you uploaded it from. A is for ancestry, M is used for 23andMe. Uh, family tree DNA starts with the letter T and my heritage starts with the letter H. And as you can see, it gives you the kit number. It gives you the largest segment that you share with the person. Uh, the top one obviously is my daughter. Uh, the second one down is, um, uh, I think the first one is actually me from two different sites because I used Ancestry and 23andMe. And the second one down is my daughter. The third one is my half sister, Linda. It tells you when the when it was compared and it'll show you the generation, uh, the most common recent ancestor and the generation that person comes from. So for instance, myself and my daughter, it's gonna be one generation, meaning me. And my sister, it says 1.4, means we're about one and a half generations to the most common recent ancestor. Since we're half siblings and the most common recent ancestor would be our biological father, it's 1.4. I don't use it a lot, um, the generation finder, because it can get a little muddled once you start getting to 3.7, 3.8. How are you gonna really know that next generation? Um, when you build your family tree, you'll see how you're related to the person once you get them in the right spot. So I just wanted to show you how you can get matches uh, through this site. So DNA testing is a fun and exciting way of learning more about your family's history and finding new family members. All of the companies I discussed today are for-profit companies. I do not work for any of the companies, nor do I recommend one over another. I recommend that you do your own research to decide which company will best suit you and your family research. Each company uses their own formula or algorithm to decipher the DNA you provide to them. So each may have different ethnicity estimates and results. Consider each company's cost, features, and privacy options best for you. Remember, do not pay for subscriptions to companies that you, if you are not using them or using them to their fullest. It's just a waste of money. So one of the people, the uh, main reason why I was looking for biological family is not only know um, who they are, but to finally know who they are by meeting them, which is really great. So on the one side, the gentleman standing next to me, and I did see pictures of him when he was younger and we do have a family resemblance. Some people think we do, some people would think we don't, but we got to meet, me and my wife got to meet him when we went to Florida, to Orlando, he lives in Titusville. We spent four hours going over genealogical research that his wife had done on the family, on his family. And I learned a little bit more about the family and we got to spend a nice four hours together. The other side is my half sister, Linda. Uh, she's just a sister. We don't use half and steps anymore in my family. Um, we, I got to meet her in uh, Washington, DC. She came from Tennessee and I drove from New Jersey. Uh, we spent four days touring museums, monuments and museums, restaurants and the pool at the hotel and learning more about each other. And we again, again met when she came up to New Jersey one time. And this is our first meeting. This is my um, business card information. I do do business as a private, uh, for private clients. One of my private clients is here today. I hope she's still here with us uh, learning more. Uh, she's a very big supporter of my presentations and likes to be involved. Grab my information. Take a picture of it, take a screenshot. I do not over solicit my business. If you're interested, get in touch. If you're not, then don't. 
I'm gonna leave my business card up for a minute. I don't usually do this, but I really need to use the bathroom. So I'm gonna do, I'm gonna leave this up for a moment. I'll be right back. And then we'll open up discussion and read some of your questions and all that great stuff, okay? Give me one minute, please, I apologize. All right, thank you for your patience, guys. I think that's the first time I ever had to do that when <laughs> during a presentation. So I'm gonna open up the video panel and I'm gonna um, stop sharing and we're back again. Thank you for your patience, guys, I appreciate it. I only see a few faces on there, but I know there's a lot of people on there. You guys can open up the microphones and we'll read some of the questions and any of the comments or anything that you guys have. I have a couple of um, questions in the chat that I can read out. Um, That's great. Okay, so I have a question from Nancy, and I'll read out the question, Nancy, if you want to unmute yourself and add anything, feel free. Um, okay. The question is, um, she says she's identified a man who she thinks may be her father's son from an extramarital affair. Um, he lives in LA, near where she grew up, looks exactly like her father. Uh, he appears to have been born with another surname but now is using her father's surname. Um, her guess is that he was put up for adoption and is now using his, his birth father's name. Uh, since he's still living, he only, she only has limited information available through DNA testing websites. Um, and what is the best way to approach him about this issue? Uh, he has not shown up as a genetic match on any of the genetic testing sites and her father is deceased. Okay, so you tested, but he might not have. Right. Okay. Um, the best way to do that, do, do you know he lives in LA? Do you, um, here's what you do. Sign up for a month of been verified or people finders. I think people finders has a, like a three day thing or a week thing. Sign up for one of the, um, Sign up for one of the uh, the background checkers. People Finder has been verified. I like People Finders. Right. Find out who this guy is. Yeah. Um, if you know his approximate age, you know the state or the city he lives in, and his name. Now you you know he's using a surname. Look right. for him on that. Get his name. Get his address. Get a phone number. Get an email address. Mm -hmm. And then. Um, I can probably uh, email you if you want to give me your email address. I can write. I can. I can put together a small um, letter that you might want to send to him. Um, how did you find out? How did you find out about him, though? You know, I don't remember. Um, I might have been googling somebody else with the same name, and he came up. Okay. And I noticed the resemblance because um, he looks exactly like my dad. He looks exactly like my sister's son that looks exactly like my dad. He's about my nephew's age. Um, and I've done the people finder. It's like, I know an awful lot. I've kind of stopped him. I know a lot about him. Um, and so my question and how to contact him. So my question is like, really, what's the, how do I, phrase it what's what's the most effective way to 
talk to somebody about this possibility. Okay, since he didn't DNA test, you can't right away say, hey, you came up as a DNA match. I'd like to learn more about you. Yeah. I mean, I guess you can just tell him that um, based on information I found during my doing, working on my genealogy on my family tree, I believe you and I might be related somehow, but I'm not quite sure how. Now, don't automatically right away say, I think you might be my half sibling, which he would be if he is your father's son from another uh, thing, he'd be a half sibling. Um, just let him know you're interested in family history and he somehow seems to be related to you. You don't have to tell him that you didn't know about him through DNA or that you've been stalking him or anything like that. Keep it brief and simple. Leave him your name, your address, your phone number, your email address, and see if he gets back in touch with you. Mm -hmm. Are there any DNA matches that match you and someone related to him? Have you built a family tree just for him? Maybe find out who his biological mother is. Um, I've, well, all I have is a last name. I, I kind of went down this rabbit hole. Uh, I thought that the name we share was actually his primary name. And I found the person I thought was him. But then I went on another website where he, he has some professional websites where I saw that he originally was using a completely different name and later started to use our common name. Okay. Um, but since I he was adopted. Since he was adopted, he might have been using his adopted name, That's found his biological family and decided to use his father's name. A lot of people have been doing that lately. Yeah. I mean, that's always up to the person. Yeah, just write him a small letter. Uh -huh. Find an address, phone number. I wouldn't email him right away. I would just send him I mean, stalk him as much as you want on LinkedIn and Facebook or whatever. Try to learn more about him. You might get some clues on how he's related, um, who his biological mother might be. You might even see on Facebook, people sometimes put other people who are related to them and how they're related to them on Facebook. For instance, I have a half sister I have on there. I have her listed as a, as a uh, I mean, a stepsister I have her listed as a sister. So people would know I'm somewhat related to them. Mm -hmm. But yeah, stalk them and then write them a briefly worded letter. Um, okay. I came across I came across um, you based on family history and some DNA research. You don't have to tell them you didn't match. Um, I'd love to talk to you more about if we might be possibly related. Okay. Give me a call. Here's my phone number. Here's my address if you want to write back to me. Here's my email address if you want to send me an email. Put together questions that you think might help you with the final one being is if he's very friendly and he seems open to communication have you done a dna test have you done an ancestry whichever one you did i would i would try to get him to do the okay. same one mm -hmm. if you did ancestry try to have him do ancestry mm -hmm. even offer to pay for it look it's a hundred bucks but if it gives you some idea you know what i mean mm -hmm. um say look i'm willing to buy it for you and, and send it to you do the test, and then we can really know if we're truly related. But you can, after you start speaking to him, you can actually, you know, send him a picture. Say, look, I want to see your picture. You, you really seem seem familiar to me, based on resemblance. Now, remember, resemblance is not always a great test to know whether he's actually related to you. But if he's open to communication, um, see if he'll test. Right. Um, do your family tree based on your DNA matches and see if anybody doesn't fit on the people that you know in your family. Because if he was adopted, then um, he might have um, relatives that are related to you that he might not even know about. So mm -hmm. once you start the communication, he might be interested, get more interested in finding out who some of his other family members are. Okay. So, I mean, I, I, if you want to send me an email, I, I have written letters for other people. Okay. But yeah, just keep it simple. Keep it, look, I don't know how we're related. You seem to be part of my family somehow. I'd like to know more. If you're interested, write me, email me, call me, have questions ready for him. Um, if he knows he's adopted, then he might be interested. Mm -hmm. You know, you okay. never know. Thank okay. You. Thank you're you. welcome.
Okay, great. Um, we have a couple of questions asking about um, transferring DNA results between companies or sharing mm -hmm. one result with another company. Um, any tips around that? Um, they're actually pretty simple. If you go to, if you go, if you did it on Ancestry, you would go to, you would, you would go to the DNA and then DNA summary. And then you would go to, um, over on the right is the settings bar and you drop down and it, and it, you can go on to Ancestry site and it'll tell you exactly how to upload your DNA. What you do is on Ancestry, you would download it from Ancestry and the best place to put the file is on your desktop. Now they send it to you as a zipped file or a compressed file. Now you don't wanna open the compressed file. You wanna leave it as a zipped file on your desktop so you can find it easy. And then you would go to MyHeritage, Living DNA, GEDmatch or any of the others, and then sign up for a free account with them using a username and a password. And you don't have to pay for it. And then once you get to their site, there'll be instructions on how to upload the DNA from your computer to that site. If anybody needs specific um, um, movement information, send me an email. I can type it out for you and send you the information. But most of the sites make it pretty easy for you to understand how to move your DNA from one site to another. So you have to download it from the site you have and then upload it to the other companies. And most of the sites have uh, pretty good information on how to do that. But if you want to send me an email, you always can. Wonderful. Uh, Judy wanted to know, if money is no object, should you do all of the tests to get as much information as possible, or is that just crazy? Even if money is no object, it's never good to waste it. It, it all depends on your specific circumstances. If you're an adoptee, do one first. I would recommend doing Ancestry first because they have the largest database and they're based in the United States. If your family, if you believe you were adopted out of another country, my heritage might be a better choice. You get a lot of matches, but they're more European based. If after you do Ancestry and you want to get more match results after moving your DNA over, do 23andMe because 23 doesn't allow uploads. Um, it might give you a more matches. Um, yeah, it's just a waste of money. Um, if even if money is no object, twenty ancestry is the most um, the most user friendly. It also gives you the most DNA matches. I think it gives you the closest ethnicity estimates. Twenty three and Me and Ancestry would be my two first choices, and then upload your DNA to the other ones so you can save some money. But hey, if money is no option, do whatever you wish. I mean, I what can I tell you? Okay. Uh, somebody else asks, uh, if the 23andMe site said relationship grandma, is that 100% accurate? No. Um, I, I don't trust, because they're all estimates, I only trust it once I definitely know I have them on a in a family tree in the correct position. So I do have other programs that I do offer libraries. If this library is interested down the road in doing my other ones, I have a one that's uh, researching your family uh, resources and researching your family to aid in family research. So it'll give you places and sites to go to and other ways of looking for information to find uh, documents and research about your family that you would use to find out whether this person is actually your grandmother. Take the centimorgans or the percentage, and I didn't go over it, I'm definitely gonna put it in here because I mentioned it, is the site called DNA Painter. Now what happens is when they give you an estimate, they give you a centimorgans based on your DNA and the shared DNA with the person. Take the percentage or the centimorgans and plug it into the shared centimorgan tool on DNA Painter. They will give you a probability, like I showed you in one of the slides, of how that person is related to you. Now, if it's going to be a grandmother and it's showing a grandmother, it's going to have a high centimorgan. You're going to be in the 1700 range, but it could also mean the person is your half sibling, an aunt, uncle, niece, nephew. 
because those are the other probabilities of that amount of centimorgan shared with somebody. Now, if it's a grandmother and you don't know it's your grandmother, you sort of have to do a little bit of research. If you're an adoptee, you sort of have to use that to find out who your biological parent was, the mother or the father, and find out who that grandmother is related to you. Um, it's an estimate. But I mean, it might be very, it might be very possible that it's your grandmother, especially based on age. If you're 40, uh, I mean, let's say, let's say you're 30 or 25, and the person is 75 to 80. Yeah, it's a good possibility she's your grandmother. Could she be a half sibling? Doubtful. Could she be a niece or an, a, a niece or an aunt? Uh, yeah, it's possible, but generally that far apart is a little stretching it that far. So once you get the probabilities, you can sort of discount which ones aren't. For instance, with my half sister, 17, 1915 centum organs, I thought she was a cousin because it said for, for, for close family, first cousin. So her husband got, got in touch with me and said, I think my wife is your cousin. We started looking for a common most common recent ancestor would be our grandparent, making her a first cousin. Since we didn't find any possible relationship that way, and knowing she's only 11 years older than I am, she's not going to be my grandchild. She's not going to be my grandparent or vice versa. She could have been a niece or an aunt, but she doesn't have any siblings. So she can't be my aunt to make one of her sisters my mother. And I, 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 the relationships didn't work. So the only possibility left was half sibling. And I found that out through people helping me. They go, how much Sam Morgan? 1915, 11 year difference. She's most likely half sister. And I had sort of known that already because of who she told me her father. So you learn as you do it, but yes, it's an estimate. I don't wanna to go too far because of, genealogy can make you nuts and you can be here for hours going over one topic yeah. and I want to get to other questions. Ken. All right. Um, somebody says, oh, when the ethnicity breakdown says greater London, uh, this person ignores it. People have been immigrating into London for hundreds, if not thousands of years, and probably the same to a slightly degree is true of Glasgow and Dublin. If you comment, want to comment on that? Yeah, I mean, again, the ethnicity estimates are, are uh, just that, their estimates. And my, migration has been happening since the beginning of human history. So people moving around doesn't necessarily mean that your family came from that specific region. Um, and when the percentage is really small, they most likely came from somewhere else. People had babies in London. A little bit of your DNA got passed on to you over to the United States. So, I mean... Ethnicity results are really great, but when you really, the only time you would really use it for your family history research is to know where people might have lived over periods of time. Like you'll find a great great grandfather that moved from like West Eastern Europe into the, in, the uh, English Isles, and he lived there his life and he had some children, and their children had children with somebody from England who has that DNA patterns, and then slowly it got passed on to you. So you would have a small percentage. I discount a lot of the ethnicity when I'm doing, especially my case, when it comes to adoption, but it does help to know where the family came from. And when you build your family tree and you wanna put in maps, or you wanna put in, you know, you wanna write a book about your family history, and then you could put in information that, uh, these people, this this family group came from Latvia, and they slowly worked their way across Eastern Europe into uh, Northwestern Europe, and then they slowly but surely emigrated to the United States. We lost some in, in the Holocaust, and some moved here. I mean, that's basically it for the ethnicity. I mean, it's it's fun, and a lot of people buy these tests for each other for Christmas, or whatever, and they they find it as fun, and they look at it, and they go, "Oh, this is great." and then they never use it again, all right? I mean, I like people using it because it helps me in my search and my clients help, you know, help my clients, but a lot of them just don't really care. So who knows? 
But yeah, that's true. I mean, you never know where people are going to come from and where they move from and how much little bit of DNA they picked up from different areas like greater London. Like, I don't need to know that. <laughs> okay. okay. Uh, Julie would like to know, what do you charge for your services? Uh, my services start at $35 per hour with a four hour minimum. That gives me time to uh, go over any information that you might have uh, already uh, accumulated. Um, it'll give me an idea of what you're looking to do. Um, generally, I would look for one or two generations back, maybe three, three generations back uh, on your family line, but everybody's story is different. For instance, I do have a client that's adopted where we're getting very close to her. Uh, final results of who one of at least one of her biological parents are. It's very exciting. Um, everybody's story is different. So some people go a lot over the four hours. Uh, some people just stop at the four hours because I give them enough information or they feel that's all they really need. I have one that had a lot of family trees. He had like five family trees for three different lines and I consolidated them for him. And he only wanted direct line. He didn't want cousins, aunts, uncles, and siblings. He just wanted direct line going back in history. And some of them went back to the 1600s. So I just verified and put documents in and he paid me for the four hours and I'm gonna give him his paperwork back soon. I'll write a small report for him, um, letting him know what I did find and what I didn't find in some ways. Um, he asked me if these two people were uh, that were married and had children were uncle and niece. And I found them to be first cousins, not uncle and niece. A lot of people, what happened was uh, one person uh, was named one name and then they had a child named the same name. And then another brother had a child and they named him the same name. So there was a, a, a father, a son and an uncle all had the same first name. So the two cousins got married, but not the uncle and niece. So, I mean, that, that was a little weird, but um, <laughs> history is history and you never know what you're gonna find, right? So yeah, I mean, that would be the case on that one. Okay. And we had somebody who was gonna unmute themselves and hello. ask, if, hello? Hi, can you hear me? Yep, yeah, go ahead. Let me put it oh, on speaker oh, view so I can see you. Oh, okay. Oh, me, oh, should I um put my video on too? If you want. Oh, it's up to okay. you. Okay. Hello. Hi, um, I'm, Mascara. Oh, hi. <laughs> I was just following up my question about um, I did the the 23 me from my grandma who passed away two years ago. She was 105. Mm -hmm. Um, so okay. her DNA was on there, and then there was a match that came on, uh a woman who's about 60 years old. Um, and we, we connected, we talked, it came out um, that my grandma was um, her grandparent, but like you mentioned, it's just an um, estimate. And so we're thinking it may have been one of my uncles, but um, with this information now, we're not, it's not hundred percent sure. And then we don't want to just um, approach my uncle and say, oh, you have a long lost daughter. So, I was just wondering um, if there's like that DNA painter that you mentioned. Right, um, right. Be helpful or just, she doesn't want to, her mother is still alive, but um, I guess it's her past. The mother doesn't want to talk about her past. Mm. Um, but, I mean, she has a name of who the father is, but. Okay. So. Um, she matched your, she matched your grandmother. Yes. And she shared 1700 centimorgans or so um it's it's high yeah i, I have the information because i'm the administrator okay. of my account um but it's, it's quite high and the numbers the ages would um match Say, yes that, that this person that that your grandmother and her that your grandmother and her grandmother are the same person um yeah and then the age of my uncles um they're very close in age, but we just don't want to make accusations because um, we don't know which uncle it, it possibly could be. And um, well, it could be an uncle or an aunt, right? And it could also be it could also be that your grandmother um, had another child, an unknown child, oh. that also had a child. Don't automatically assume that it's someone oh. that you know. She might have had another child. Oh, 
build. So what you do is build the family tree as best you can. Mm -hmm. Put everybody you know in it. And if you find any matches that really don't make sense on your match list, try to build a family tree just for them. Oh. Okay. So like if you have like even even her match, try to find out as much as you said she's only 16. No, 60. Oh, she's 60. Okay. And she's 105. Um yeah, I mean, she could, uh, she wouldn't, she's matching with your grandmother. And, uh, she wouldn't be a half sibling. She wouldn't be, she, she definitely could be a niece. She could be a niece or a grandchild. Um, I would discount being um, a half sibling, obviously. But at the high Santa Morgan range, yeah, just build the family trees out as far as you can and see if there might be any possibility of an unknown uh, child of your grandmother. Uh -huh. And then uh, did you do a DNA test? Did she match to you? Um, I did do DNA, but I'm on Ancestry and, and my grandma and hers was 23 and me. Okay. Um, move, uh, yeah. Um, if you can, move your... <clears throat> Oh, and she's on 23andMe also. So that's what I don't like about some of these sites. They don't allow you to upload to 23andMe. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, is she curious about it? Oh, yes. We've talked. And yeah, she, she was curious. And then yeah. I'm curious too. Tell her, tell her to upload her DNA to, let's say, even MyHeritage. And mm -hmm. on her 23andMe, ask her if she'll move it to MyHeritage. Oh, okay. Take your ancestry move it to my heritage oh. Oh, that okay. way that way you and her will come up as a match and then you'll see how many centa morgans she shares with you and then plug the centa morgans or the percentage into dna painter and it'll give you the probability of how you're related now most likely if it's your grandmother she's going to come up as a first cousin mm -hmm. if she's a child of your if she's a child of your uncle who would be your parent's uh, sibling, mm -hmm. then she will come up as a first cousin in the six to 900 range, maybe a mm -hmm. thousand. But DNA Paint will, will, and you can also download just the shared Santa Morgan project chart. The, the shared Santa Morgan project chart, you can just download that and it'll give you uh, the chart without having to plug it in, just so you can have an idea of how people are related. But that's oh. a very interesting, very interesting uh, subject right there that you have. And, um, I mean, I find it all the time, different things. I have a, I have a first cousin once removed. She did 23 and me. I matched mm -hmm. with her. Mm -hmm. Then she had her brother's test. But guess what? They came up as half siblings. Oh. So she found that uh, her biological father is not her biological father. The biological mm -hmm. father is to the brothers, but not her. But she's related to me because we share her mother. Her mother oh. is my most common. Her mother is, her mother is my aunt. Oh wow! So we learned that her brothers were not her biological brothers. They're half siblings. I mean, yeah. they're biological, but they're half siblings. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I mean, she just found out that her. The father, their racers, you know, is not the father, so that was a big deal. On, on your on that story, yeah. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, right. So, um, yeah. There's there's ways of tracking that because um, build that tree out as far as you can. Go back to mm -hmm. great great. Go to go, go to great grandparent and branch it out left and right. Get all the siblings of your great grandparents, mm -hmm. and then all the siblings of your grandparents. And just build it down and then try to place her somewhere in that tree. Mm. And, and if it's based on Santa Morgans, if she's a grandchild of the, if the, she's a grandchild, she'll fit mm -hmm. in. Well, I wish she would just approach her mother because her mother knows. <laughs> Gently That's, approach, you know. Yeah, you can always tell her to sit her mom down. I mean, if she's 60, her mom's got to be anywhere between 80 and 90. She's 80. Point. The mom is 80. Okay, so she had a fairly young. Okay. Yeah. Um, man, tell her to get her mom to do a DNA test too. She, the more the more testing that you get done, uh -huh. like I said, my client, she had 
she did hers. I get, got her a DNA test. We got her results. She had a, a high match, but not high enough to know exactly how it was related, the 800 range. And we found a lot of history and we ended up finding out most likely who her grandparent was, one of her grandparents, a grandfather. And then she started getting other people that she contacted to test and we got more results. And we just got one that was very high for close family, first cousin match, which is very high. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna also on, you can also use a tool. I mean, everybody has to learn how to use the software a little bit. Yeah. I, can, I can give presentation after presentation, but unless you get involved and start working on it, mm -hmm. you're never really gonna know how to use it because it's hard to relay certain kinds of information. But on DNA Painter, there's a site called What Are the Odds? Okay. Oh. Now what you do is you build a family tree. Mm -hmm. Don't build it too large, build it uh, like to great grandparents, but include everybody, okay? And then you would put the question in what are the odds version two on DNA Painter, who is this person or whatever you wanna put in, all right? Um, give it a title, who is this person? And then you're gonna put in all your DNA matches, centum organs into the people on that family tree. Anybody you have DNA centum organs for, you're gonna put it in that tree and you're gonna hit the populate hypotheses. And it'll come up with numbers from zero to infinity. And the highest number is gonna be your most likely candidate of who the person is you're looking for. But learn how to use the software, but what are the odds tool on DNA Painter would really probably really work well for you because if you have a few DNA matches that are associated to this person, then mm -hmm. it's going to populate a, a, a fairly good po a probability of who the person's parent is, oh. or that the person is the grandparent. But you have to, you know, you have to learn how to use it. If you have time, oh, yeah. uh -huh. if you have time, you'll eventually you'll eventually learn how to use it. Oh, okay, great. Okay, thank you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. We have more questions. I have one more in the chat. Um, okay. Debbie was asking which site you would recommend DNA testing with first, if uh, for someone who is outside the US, like in Canada, for best general baseline information. Okay, Canada, Canada is still using a lot of the ancestry and 23andMe because it's on the North American continent. If a lot of the people that you're looking for or believe you're looking for emigrated to Canada from England or France because they're, you know, they're a British colony and a French, co not a French colony anymore in Quebec and Montreal, but then my heritage would be a good choice. If you think your family has been in Canada for a very long time or portions came to the United States, then Ancestry would probably be your best bet because it's the largest database and 23andMe. But if you think, like I said, if a lot of your family members that might be in Canada came from uh, England and France to Canada, uh, most recently, I'd say after 1900, then try my heritage. But remember, you can always use Ancestry and 23 and me and move your DNA to my heritage to get those matches for free. So um, 23 and me, they have sales on their DNA test once in a while. I don't think you get as many matches, but you'll get more European matches. Hope that answered the question. Okay. Um, that was great. Um, there's nothing else in the chat. If nobody else has any other questions, uh, I think we can say thank you so much for joining us. There was a lot of information that you gave. Um, I thought it was really great. If you, uh, like I said, I always tell the libraries that, that that book one event for one event for me, not that I push it or anything like that. I do have other programs, like I said, on understanding uh, your DNA matches, um, family tree building, and researching your family, places to look for information and try to get uh, more information about your family so you can build the family tree correctly. Because if you just start throwing uh, names in there and clicking on this and that on Ancestry and saying, oh, it's from a family tree, it must be right, you're going to put wrong information in there. So get in touch if you guys are interested. If anybody wanted to grab my information, I'm going to send you guys, I'm going to send the library a handout of the presentation today. 
so that if uh, you guys are interested to get like a handout of what I went over today on my slides. Um, I know there's a lot of people. Um, I don't want to bog the library down with a lot of that, but I'll send it to you so you have it. And tell Jenna, I'm sorry I missed her. Uh, tell her she has to get in touch with me and we'll see about doing another program for you guys down the road. And I hope everybody enjoyed. Any feedback is always welcome. So I like the questions. I love answering them. And uh, Miss Mascara, I hope you have a, uh, a good turnout on your, uh, your, your thing. If you need help and you want to hire me, I'm available. So give me a call. Thank you, guys. I appreciate it. Bye. Thank you very Thank much. Thank you. You're welcome.